Is there such a thing as perfect? Is there a perfect product, something universal in its appeal and adaptability? Possibly the nearest thing to a perfect product would be something that could change to suit the user, be different things to different people, or even different things for the same person. Perhaps this is why smartphones are so popular. Though they come off the production line identical, after a while it's a phone's interface will have been customized to be as unique as the user, with different layouts, apps, icons, and accessibility preferences. Phones become so personal with how we use them and the messages and phone numbers inside them that almost no two are the same. We've definitely seen the commercial benefits of advanced personalization on e-commerce and retail experiences. And we can see AI-powered personalization in our homes with our smart devices, you know, optimizing and personalizing things like our central heating to our behaviors and habits. So what about films? Now, films are a strange one, as they're often held in the same regard as fine art, regardless of the content. A precious, unique vision for better or worse. But really, like, who are we kidding? 90% of what we see is like production line content churned out by large studios to a formula designed to get as many bums on seats as possible. Now, currently, the studios essentially use segmentation-based personalization to try and maximize the impact of a film for known groups. This age bracket prefers this sort of runtime. This age group responds well to this star. This region likes this type of content, and so on. This roughly works in the same way as group segmentation works in retail. People like you bought this product. It's not perfect, but it does make a difference. Retail and e-commerce is about to get a massive shot in the arm with AI, supercharging it like a super soldier to deliver advanced and highly tailored personal experiences. So what could this do to the landscape of film and cinema? It's an industry that has already felt the prickly fingers of AI on it already, with Netflix using algorithms to suggest movies you may like and tailoring the viewing experience to optimize quality based on bandwidth. So what does cinema look like in the new age of AI and advanced personalization? Well, where to begin? Let's start with language. Recently, Bong Joon-ho, director of Parasite, said, once you overcome the one inch tall barrier of subtitles, you'll be introduced to so many more amazing films. Not so subtly digging at the fact that for a lot of people, subtitles are still a huge blocker for watching foreign movies. In animation, they've been able to get around this with very smart redubs and tweaks to the actual animation to make the foreign language version of the film often just as good as the original. I'm getting a little bored of this curse of yours, Ashitaka. Let me just cut the damn thing off. Perhaps AI could do something similar. Already, we're starting to see systems like Microsoft Translator able to translate in real time. This is a new multi-device translation feature on the Microsoft Translator application. Si tratta di una nuova funzionalità di traduzione multi-device sull'applicazione Microsoft Translator. So perhaps a film could be instantly auto-translated into any language. And with enough data and AI, that could be trained so that the voice sounds identical to the original actor and even adjust their mouth shape to avoid any of that traditional out-of-sync dialogue ticks foreign movies used to be famous for. Oh. Ah, you be careful! You very nearly made me a blind man! It would essentially look like Tom Cruise speaking perfect Mandarin, which he can probably do anyway. Bastard. And if you're replacing the dialogue and lip-syncing to translate, then what else could you do? What about removing swearing? What the fork? Cultural references. Tweak accents and slang to match your region. Maybe you could tweak it to remove any criticism of a government or regime. Maybe you could use it to add statements that would appease regions. Now, if you're starting to get a niggling feeling that this might not be so great for the future of cinema, well, let's see what else AI could do. How about runtime and speeds? Now, different regions have different tolerances for runtime and speed. Foreign audiences on the whole tend to have a higher tolerance for longer runtimes, whereas in the West, we're brought up on a diet of dual screening and relatively tight runtimes. Now recently, Netflix trialed being able to change the playback speed on Android devices, similar to podcasts, YouTube, and other media. Filmmakers like Judd Apatow were not impressed by this, with Judd rage tweeting, don't fuck with our timing, we give you nice things, leave them as they were intended to be seen. Like, look, honestly, I get it, but also, why the hell not? Why do we have to be so dictating of how people consume media in their own homes? If someone wants to watch a film at 1.5 speed, then why not? It's not like you're controlling every other factor going on at that time, like the fact they're possibly also flicking through Instagram on their phone with a cat trying to jump on their face and maybe watching on an iPad on their lap. It's hardly the cinematic experience it was designed for. So why be so precious that the playback speed has been increased by 0.25%? Why not let an AI study your playback patterns and start to learn the speed you like to watch films? Maybe, you know, action movies, you're happy with the intended speed, 
but with documentaries you prefer slightly faster, you know, which would have actually been handy when I was watching Don't Fuck With Cats the other day, as I both wanted to know how that played out and could not get through that shit fast enough. Oof. So we're changing dialogue so we don't have to read, and speeding it up so we can get through it faster. What else? How about accessibility? Let's talk about something more positive. Inclusivity. The filmmakers who are digging their heels in about playback, or how something should be projected, are in a way being pretty unconsciously biased, assuming that the way they consume the film is the correct way, and should be the only way. For a lot of people, they're unable to engage with movies positively like the rest of the world, due to accessibility needs such as colour levels or volume, which can either stop them watching a movie or make it very difficult. These individual preferences are nuanced and inconsistent across movies and stories. Again, an AI could be trained to know your individual preferences and optimise the film accordingly. This would allow a whole range of people access to movies that they haven't had before, whether that's by being able to dim colour and sound for those with autism, to punching up dialogue and reducing background noise for those with hearing differences. And for those that require audio descriptions of the scenes, then this could also be powered by AI object recognition, able to describe any scene on the fly. Smiling, Rafiki bends over Simba, the baby lion, and shakes his walking stick, which has two melons tied to it. So language sorted, playback fast, and now the picture optimized, what else can we do? How about all those pesky regional differences? Exclusion. Now this is where it starts to get really concerning. Already we've seen studios push minorities and ethnicities to the fringes of the films, seemingly giving them just enough screen time so they're inclusive on the press tour, but not enough that they can't cut them out for distribution in the Middle East and China, which was depressingly done for Star Wars, and oddly not done for Beauty and the Beast, which is a bit weird as that inclusive scene was this. Really, a tertiary male character turning around while dancing and momentarily dancing with another male character for a second. And that was it. And that got it banned in China. It means it's, it's hardly Stonewall here. Honestly, if that's your idea of inclusion, you might as well have just left it on the cutting room floor. It's actually insulting. Now, worryingly, if this is the trend that studios are going, then in the future the AI could alter even further. Films to different regions and audiences, able to nip and tuck and edit and remove minority characters or plots that clash with the region's rules and laws automatically. I'm certainly not saying they should, but they could do it. And with a studio determined to squeeze as much money out of a film as possible, decisions like this could become appealing. Okay, language playback, picture, removing pesky minorities, let's have a look at the really scary one. Deep fakes. If you're new to the slightly terrifying world of deep fakes, their AI algorithms are trained on hundreds of hours of how an actor's face moves and looks. Once learned, this can be used to superimpose that actor's face on anyone you like, creating a new generation of fake news, celebrity porn, and face replacement CGI. Is that uh, Seth Rogen was like, you know, it was amazing. He has like a you know a bike track in his backyard. It's phenomenal. <laughs> and and I did a Seth Rogen impression, and it was like I did a magic trick. Tom Cruise was like, yeah. <laughs> wow. And he points to me. <laughs> And he pointed at me and he goes, you do impressions and you're on Saturday Night Live. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and went, hey. It was like you want a game show. He was like, yeah, Tom. <laughs> so how about this? Say you don't like Chris Pine in the lead role of the movie you're watching. Well, why not use deepfake technology to just swap him out to Chris Pratt? It wouldn't just be Chris Pratt's face and voice, but his performance too. The AI having been trained on how he would say those lines, not just what it sounds and looks like. And why swap at just one character? Why not swap out actors to people you like, building the cast of your dreams? Let's remake The Avengers instantly with Eddie Murphy as Falcon, and Tom Cruise as Iron Man, and Brad Pitt as Thor. Don't like foreign actors? Swap them out for good old Americans. Don't like women? No problem. Don't like people of colour? Instantly whitewash the whole cast. The potential for this is nightmarish and incredibly depressing. But on the plus side, you could have the John Malkovich option to set every character to be played by John Malkovich, which wouldn't be so bad. Malkovich, 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 Malkovich. So we've got the whole movie sounding and looking how we want, starring the cast that we want, and only saying things we agree with. So does the original film even exist anymore, or is this the version you see in the cinema? Well, let's have a look at the cinema experience. 
Now, everything so far could have been done for the at-home logged-in experience, potentially leaving cinemas to be the one place to see the movies as the creators intended. However, with personalization being so preferable, and if audiences do like and take to the nightmarish hellscape of what we've spoken about so far, then we could see cinema attendance start to drastically drop. Possibly then an augmented experience is the way forward, allowing users to still get the buzz of going to the cinema experience, the build-up and the excitement, the communal experience of sitting in a room together, the feeling as those lights go down, but instead of a projection to a big screen, it's a projection to an individual headset, personalized to your language and accessibility preferences. We already sit with bulky 3D glasses on for some films, so is this so far removed? So what does this all look like together? Films where you can alter the cast and dialogue, and can alter the sound and the design of the colors. Dialogue and language can change. Runtime and editing can all be altered. So like our smartphones, off the production line, these films would be the same, and the structure and story would be the same, but individually they'd be so optimized as to be individually unique and no two experiences the same. Which brings us to our final point, automation. So far we've treated these points like settings on a menu that we pick and choose from, unconsciously changing the media we're presented. By personalization often doesn't work this way. It's pattern recognition based on behavior. And to take it further, we're already seeing early brain machine interfaces able to pattern read your feelings and emotions while watching something. In time, these could be used to auto adjust your settings and preferences without you even knowing about it. Tweaking settings to get the best laugh or the biggest jump, amplifying unconscious bias and filtering out anything challenging or likely to upset. Now let's bring it back to reality. Trends don't always usurp their predecessor. Photography didn't stop people from painting and film didn't stop people from taking photographs. Perhaps the majority of films will remain untouched, but a new generation of movie could be born, one that's designed for advanced personalization and optimization. And these things will cohabit our movie going experiences. I personally want human beings to tell me human stories, but John Malkovich Avengers is definitely appealing. Hey, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed or been annoyed by anything I've said and want to be annoyed at other things that I'm likely to talk about in the future, then please do like and subscribe and leave hateful and hurtful comments below. Thanks.